Hey everybody, welcome back to the Engineer to Hunt channel. Um, ice fishing season is just kind of getting into full swing here and I'm getting ready to go on a few bigger trips in the next couple of weeks and I thought it was a good time maybe to go ahead and go over what I do for my leader boxes for both northerns and walleyes and specifically kind of the fluorocarbon leaders I use. So to start it off, why do we need to use fluorocarbon leaders? So the idea of fluorocarbon is it's clear and fish cannot see it. In clear lakes especially that if you have your tip-up line, you know I use black tip-up line here, so if you have your black tip-up line in clear bodies of water the fish can see it pretty easy. Just trying to not tip the fish off basically, especially educated fish. Like I said, clear water is the most important. I myself have pretty much transitioned almost exclusively using fluorocarbon no matter where I go or what I'm fishing on tip-ups. I generally have fluorocarbon leaders on. Where I really got turned on to it, I was fishing Portage Lake in Houghton County and I knew there was big northerns around. I mean, I was marking these huge fish on the sonar screen all day following these schools of smelt but I would never catch any on the tip-ups. And so I had actually went outside, put all my fluorocarbons, took my steel eaters off, put my fluorocarbon leaders on for walleyes and dropped them down at night. And I started catching northerns left and right. And from that point forward, um, I kind of caught on to it and I've been using them pretty heavily now. I actually have two boxes of leaders here that I use. The first box is just plain hooks. The second box is uh, either UV or glow stuff and then spoons uh, or kind of jigs. So in the first box here, the hook box, I do still carry a regular um, set of steel leaders. They have all different size hooks on them. I think I pretty much have, uh, on this one I have everything from I have one to eights on here. So I do have different size leaders on here. For the most part, they're either nine or 12 inch though for that. The second spool I have is my Northern hooks. So on this one here, they're generally tied with 40 pound fluorocarbon. Hooks one to six in size. The, the last one in that box is a little bit smaller set of hooks. Hooks from size four to 10 it looks like. These small ones here I'll have tied with 20 pound test and the bigger ones like this I'll have tied with uh, 30 pound test. So those are kind of more for walleyes than northerns. That's it for that box. So this second box here is my jig box or my glow one. This first spool here has a mixture of glow hooks, um, glow, jigs these are venoms i have some uv flash champs and i think those are those are from vmc as well uh, and then the last one that i have here is my kind of normal spoon or jig so i have an assortment of swedish pimples here and then the rest this is a this is a forged spoon and then the rest are all forage minnows both of these spools are generally tied with 30 pound test. There's a few that are tied with 20 pounds. So it's either 20 or 30 pound test on these two spools. The reason I like to tie a lot of stuff with 30 pound test is because I use these, I use these as well, not just standard hooks for Northerns too. I, I really like the Swedish pimples for Northerns and I've caught some of my biggest fish on the forage minnows as well. Um, a couple of those really big ones in the UP on Portage Lake came on forage minnows. I don't know. I like a little extra flash. I like to try some different colors. The flash champs are also have been really good to me, especially the pink um, for northerns. One thing I guess I should note, a lot of these hooks are size sixes or eights. And I actually upgraded a lot of these because they came with they came with eights or even a lot of them were tens, I think. Uh, so those aren't big enough for most of what I like. So I, uh, I just bought a pack of hooks and, and upgraded them. In general, with both these boxes here, I do tie them different lengths. So like 
for instance, for the, uh, for the northern hooks here, I have the same size hooks on each end. So one end, this end here is shorter one. So if I'm fishing in like a shallow water situation, I'm not fishing in more than like four foot of water. I don't need a, a three or four foot leader uh, in that situation. I need like a foot long one or a, a foot and a half long one. So these are shorter. Um, if I'm fishing like deeper water, so we're talking like Beta Knock or Portage Lake or something like that where I'm fishing 10 to 30 foot of water roughly, um, then I'm gonna want a probably a, a two and a half, three foot long leader. Like I said, pound test depends on what you're fishing. If you want to fish northern, I would say 40 or 30. Obviously, I have to be smart and not horse them. And for walleyes, you'd probably want 15 to 30 pound test. Okay, so I pulled one out from both my jig box, more so for walleye, um, and then I pulled one out from my hook box, more so for northern. So what we have going on here is this one's just a plain, regular old hook. This one here is a Venom Glow. The way I put these together is I just um, get some 100% fluorocarbon leader material. This stuff here is just the blue label. That's pretty, pretty standard run-of-the-mill stuff. Um, I've used Berkley Vanish, whatever you want to use. Cut it to whatever length you want. I tie a barrel swivel on one end so you'll see that these are two different sizes. Um, the northern one, I put a heavier duty barrel swivel on it. For the walleye ones, I use a little bit smaller barrel swivel. On the other end, I tie whatever I got. So I got a hook on this one or the venom spoon on it. And then the big thing also that I add to these is I add line weights. The bigger the minnow that goes on there, the more weight I put on there. The point of this weight basically is if you can imagine this hanging here like this and the minnow is down here. And if you have a big minnow, it's basically, if you take these, imagine these aren't here right now, this minnow pretty much, if it's strong enough, which it generally is, to carry just your line weight if these sinkers aren't here, it can swim up uh, and, and around, you know, in a real big circle. By putting these weights on here, if I get the right amount of weight, I can keep that minnow pinned down to now, instead of being this big of a loop and you know, all the way up here, now that minnow is here. So now it's got a loop like this and you know, a sphere, I guess, like this, a globe. So I just use it to keep the minnow pinned down in a smaller area where you want to keep it. This distance here to here, um, you can play with it. I don't like to have it right on top of the hook generally, just because of the whole reason we have the fluorocarbon leader is so that they can't see it. And so I don't like it to be right on top of the hook, but I also don't want it way up here where it's not gonna really do me any good. So on this one, you can see it's probably, I don't know, nine inches or so, eight, nine inches. One benefit of the spoons is the weight of the spoon actually can keep that minnow pinned down. That's the other reason I use a spoon. So generally speaking, the weight of this right here is gonna be enough to keep that minnow pinned down. It's not just the hook, especially because, I mean, you see the size of the minnow that's on here. And then as far as hooking it up to the tip-ups go, I use these barrel snaps. That's how I attach these. I switch these out quite a bit. Um, if you've watched my How We Fish Bait and Knock video, um, you'll hear me talk about how I change things up. If things aren't working, I wanna run out there and try a different color. Um, try a different presentation. I don't like to have to tie and untie, so I put these barrel snaps on there. All I gotta do is pop it on there, snap it, we're done. I wanna change it, I pop it off, I'm done. One other thing you wanna be really careful of with fluorocarbon leaders is, especially with northerns, but with walleyes too, both of them have teeth, um, the leader will get nicked up. So what you can do is you just take your finger, start here, and run it down, you know, maybe run it up eight inches or something, and you'll be able to feel any imperfection. It should be perfectly smooth. If there's any nicks or rough feeling spots, you're gonna wanna cut it um, and retie it. The box is worth every penny. So each one of these rolls holds 12 liters. Um, if you try and not 
if you don't have something like this, they get into a huge tangled mess. When I first started these, I had like four and I had to spend five minutes untangling them every time I go fishing. So if you're gonna get into the tying the fluorocarbon leaders, I would suggest starting with a box. Um, you can get them at Fleet Farm, Cabela's. I'm sure you can get them other places, but us folks from Wisconsin love our Fleet Farm and Cabela's. So, all right. If you guys have any more questions on what I do for this, let me know. Otherwise, I hope it was helpful to kind of go over what we do for leaders. Good luck out on the ice.